on everybody what's going on facebook youtube and the dream rare podcast today i want to talk about president Zelensky of ukraine i found some pretty interesting stuff it's public information i had to dive a little deep but i'm not going into, into any private stuff nothing like that just mainstream news from a few years ago also certain stuff that's just broadcasted really explaining a lot that people aren't getting into on mainstream media uh, one of them is the oligarchs who was backing his election one of them apparently allegedly is banned from america nobody's talking about that so we got to look into that another one of them is the production studio covartal that he uh, i forget the number around it i'll have to look that he uh, created that helped him get into office etc that now almost i'm not going to say doubles as a government group but a lot of the people from his production company are in his government uh three different news reports that ended up not being true out of ukraine i want to put it all together do a total deep dive on this i think you're going to find it very interesting and it took me like two hours today and a couple hours yesterday to put this all together so this is probably going to be my best presentation of the week and i have a lot a lot of stuff for you so we're going to get into it once everybody gets here thank you guys for being here i appreciate it so so much and that's what it is so wait a few seconds i just want to make sure it's cracking on youtube and then we're getting into it all right so let's look real quick um while everybody's here i'm sure a lot of you guys saw this you know he the famous quote from Zelensky: i need ammo not a ride you know the heroic quote i need ammo not a ride we're going to get into that for in a little bit but first it's important to really get into the basics let's do it so Kvartal 95 is a studio uh, that's a publicly held entertainment television production company in Ukraine since 2003. The studio, as well as the KVN team, was created by Volodymyr Zelensky, who ran in the 2019 U Ukraine presidential election. He talks about making the world a better place, a kinder, more joyful place. That's why he created it. This is the interesting part. After Zelensky's inauguration, most leading figures of Kvartal 95 joined Zelensky's administration as deputy heads of the presidential administration of Ukraine, and one was appointed deputy head of the Ukrainian Secret Service. Isn't that interesting? So his team ended up being part of his presidential administration, his production company, uh, and one of them being the deputy head of the Ukrainian Secret Service. You know, it produced Kvartal. 95 produced films, cartoons, and television shows, including the TV series Servant of the People, in which Zelensky played the role of the president of Ukraine. The series aired from 2015 to 2019. And then a political party bearing the same exact name as the television show was created in March of 2018 by employees of Kvartal 95. So I kind of reported on this earlier, but this is important before I get into the whole deep dive. I want to make people understand how interesting this is right people say well trump had the apprentice you know reagan was an actor i don't think it's remotely the same as what this guy did he created a production company correct and we're going to get into other stuff including who they were working with but created a production company created a television show created the team of kvartal 95 created a tv show i'm this teacher just like you you know i'm the president of the ukraine randomly i became the president they programmed it into the heads of the ukrainian people then he became president and then once again kvartal 95 a lot of these people ended up in secret service in the government and uh he created a political party with the same exact name from the show so whether you love the guy don't like the guy love ukraine or are skeptical it doesn't really matter i think this story is not getting enough play and it's absolutely fascinating i would say one of the greatest psychological operations in the modern era, whether you love it or hate it, it's just what it is. You're literally creating something that ends up being government. It's like turning TV production into reality. It's truly fascinating. We had to get that out of the way. Now I want to talk about, now that we know this is an actor producer who created pretty much his own political campaign out of a studio and his own team out of a studio, let's look at some of the most viral stories before we get into other stuff because I want this to be perfectly demonstrated for everybody to see before we get into it. So this is probably the most popular quote of the entire thing. I've seen it on every single meme page. I've seen it everywhere. It says, I need ammo, not a ride. They're turning him into this Marvel hero. Like I need, hold on one second. Just run it again so you can see. 
you know, everybody's posted this. I've seen celebrities, like million follower people. Man, what a heroic guy. He wants ammo not around. He doesn't want to leave Ukraine. He's fighting for his people, right? This guy is so, so brave. This is like the greatest quote to me. It kind of sounded similar to Jesse Smollett getting a Subway sandwich at 2 a.m. where I'm like, maybe. I mean, you know, it's a possibility he was hungry. I would think since he's rich, he would just Uber Eats it since Chicago is not the greatest city to walk around on 2 a.m. I'm not saying it's that bad, but, you know, it didn't sound believable. But anyway, let's get into this. Even the Washington Post is now admitting Zelensky's famous quote of need ammo, not a ride is not easily confirmed. What does that mean? Not easily confirmed. It's, it means so far, the only evidence for that line is an unnamed U.S. official. It has not been confirmed by either the U.S. government or Zelensky's office. So this famous quote, nobody knows where it came from because the government of Ukraine and Zelensky's office will not take credit for it. The U.S. government won't confirm it. Only an unnamed U.S. official. Who is that? Is this like someone in the CIA? Is this some random lady who has a desk job at the Department of you know, Homeland Security? Like you, an unnamed U.S. official? This is what they used to do to Trump all the time. They used to air gossip about, let's find some government employee that hates Donald Trump, say something, and then we'll act like you know it's this huge story. They did it so many times. When you have an unnamed U.S. official that even the Ukrainian government and Zelensky's office will not say where that quote came from. The chances are it's not real. The chances are it's some sort of made up quote that somebody made to really get people to really support it. You know, and some people say, well, Anomaly, who cares? You know, who cares about the truth anymore? I got this. I made a video on Instagram. Who cares if it's real or not? We're just lying in order to get people involved. Well, I actually care because whether it be WMDs in Iraq, the Syrian chemical gas attack, um, you know, there's so many stories over the course of the last 10, 20 years that got America involved in war, that got other countries involved in war, that got civilians killed, that got people's parents and brothers killed and, you know, husbands killed, etc. So I kind of care. You know, I do care if people are lying to people in order to get them to support a war agenda, whether it be for Putin, whether it be for Ukraine, whether it be in Afghanistan, Yemen. I Maybe I'm crazy, but I think it's important to know the truth. You should call out Putin's lies. You should call out Biden's lies. You should call out Trump's lies. I'm not... I, who wants to be lied to? People are like, who cares if it's a lie? It's like, why wouldn't you care when this could potentially start World War III? I'm not trying to scare people. I'm just saying it's it's kind of a big deal if somebody's lying uh, on either side. So let's get into three stories. And then you got to stay till the end because I promise you, you're going to learn some stuff you've never seen. So this was the other famous, uh, there, there's three different stories. There's one was the ghost of Kiev. I just want to show this real quick. So this was the ghost of Kiev. It was, you know, an old photo published by someone in Ukraine. Uh, it ended up being a debunked urban legend, ghost of Kiev, promoted by Ukrainian government in a bid to unite nations, says the sun. And then they said the footage starts with a cartoon mock-up of a plane before going into the debunked footage of a destroyed Russian jet. Then the text appears, uh, you know, talking about this anonymous pilot nicknamed the ghost of Kiev, however you say that word. Now, I don't know if it's true or not. It looks like it's probably another fake story. And then once again, people are like, well, you know, we want to tell these tall tales to just get people amped up for war. And I'm just thinking to myself, well, now this is two of the three most viral stories in Ukraine that turned out to not be real in favor of an actor producer president who acted and produced his way into government and then turned his production studio essentially into his like government team. OK, what about the Snake Island story? Right. That was heavily, heavily reported. That's got to be real. Right. Because that's the only other viral story that I can really remember that caught on. Let's take a look. So this is the top story. CNN. This was a few weeks ago. Soldiers defiant last words as warships target Snake Island. The Guardian said it. Go F yourself. They said BBC, Washington Post, Fox News, left wing, right wing, British News. Everybody and their mama, right-wing meme pages, left-wing meme pages, everybody said the Snake Island heroes, they died on the island, they told Russia to go F themselves, and they all got killed. Except for the fact that also wasn't true. The CNN even reported recently, defiant soldiers of Snake Island are actually alive. Fox did the same thing. Snake Island defenders who defied Russian warship captured alive, not killed, said the Ukrainian Navy. So there's the third most viral story. Also a lie. Also a made-up lie. Or a misreported lie. So this is interesting, right? How did this story get so misreported? How did every single media company from Fox News to Guardian to BBC to CNN, 
how did everybody report this story so recklessly when it wasn't real? Well, it's actually because President Volodymyr Zelensky himself said it and people just believe him. So they reported it like it was true, but he was lying. Here, let's take a listen to him and I'll translate it for you. На жаль, мы втратили за сегодня уже 137 heroes, our citizens. He said 10 of them were officers, 316 people have been wounded. And then he said, defending the Zemini, which is Snake Island, all of our border guards died a heroic death. And then he follows up with, but they have not surrendered. They will all be awarded posthumously the title of the hero of Ukraine. So the reason that story went so viral was because President Zelensky himself said it. And time and time again, these stories that end up being debunked are not just being shared by random reporters or people on the ground. It's coming from the Ukrainian government. So it's asking me the question. I'm like, what, what is real that they're saying? Because the three most popular stories in America are all either debunked, unconfirmed, or completely now known as not real. So this is where it gets really, really interesting, folks, because there was a Ukrainian billionaire oligarch who allegedly is banned in the United States who is backing or backed the presidential election of Zelensky. And now that, you know, Zelensky's trying to distance himself because this guy's in a lot of trouble. Let's get down into it. And I got a few minutes on here. Stay tuned with me. Let's look at this guy. Ready? So this is Ihor Kolominsky. Um, you know, he's a billionaire businessman in Ukraine, the second or third richest person in Ukraine. He's under criminal investigation in America, or he was, and it says blacklisted by the U.S. Look at that. In April 2021, Kolominsky and his wife and children were banned from entering the United States, which accused him of corruptly using the time as governor to personally enrich himself. Uh, the statement, Secretary of State Anthony, Antony Blinken uh, reported on it, and I guess... I don't know if he's still blacklisted, but as long as this was written, he was blacklisted. So this this Ukrainian oligarch banned by the United States. Let's look into it. Why exactly was he banned? I'm going to get into the whole scandal. It has to do with some sort of private bank. Here it is. In 2016, Ihor Kolominsky and his business partner, don't know how to pr pronounce it, were accused of defrauding Ukraine's largest bank, private bank of billions of dollars. The Ukrainian government nationalized the bank in 2016 after a $5.6 billion bailout. The lawsuit against Kolominsky was brought by a private bank in the High Court of London. Long story short, I guess, uh, keep moving. It said, in April 19th, Ukrainian court ruled that the nationalism of private bank was illegal. Ukraine's central bank said it would not be possible to reverse the nationalism and that it would appeal the decision. Kolominsky states he had no interest in taking over control of the bank and seeks $2 billion in compensation. So he's trying to fight it. He says that they're lying. They're saying it's illegal. He's allegedly banned from the United States. And... Wikipedia talks about Jewish politics. It says he founded the European Jewish Union. He's a prominent supporter of Ukraine's Jewish community. You know, uh, his appointment was described as putsch, a Soviet style takeover, according to people that don't like him. I don't know what's true there. Here's an Atlantic article that explains the, the betrayal of Volodymyr Zelensky, the surreal story of how a comedian who played a Ukrainian president on TV became the president in real life then found him at the center of a political scandal. Check this out. It says, the Zelensky presidency likely would have never happened without Kolominsky's not-so-hidden hand. It was Kolominsky's television network that broadcasted Kvartal's programs, including Servant of the People. And it was Kolominsky's network that touted Zelensky's candidacy in its news coverage. Over the course of his campaign, Zelensky reportedly visited Israel and Switzerland 13 times, a place where Kolominsky happened to have in houses. Okay, if you search who is the largest real estate owner in downtown Cleveland? It is Ukrainian oligarchs. Somehow they own Cleveland. Ukrainian oligarchs who amass downtown Cleveland real estate with laundered funds is under investigation, says Cleveland Scene. BuzzFeed reported on Wednesday that Igor Kolominsky, the Ukrainian oligarch who became the largest owner of commercial real estate in downtown Cleveland, using allegedly laundered funds, is now under investigation from U.S. authorities. So you could look into that whole story yourself. I don't want to bore you. I mean, I don't think this is boring, but in general... Zelensky's show was aired apparently by this guy's television network. That's what that report said. The show was a show that said that Zelensky was the president. He was just this average teacher. So he aired it. He aired the coverage of Zelensky, you know, helped him basically win the election. And now this guy is allegedly, reportedly, et cetera, banned from the United States. And there's some sort of massive scandal where they're accusing him of defrauding a bank. 
and he somehow owns all most more real estate in Cleveland than anybody else. I mean, that story gets so much deeper than that. You could look into it. And once again, you know, I know that there's court battles over this and stuff. I'm not trying to pick a side per se, because I have no idea what happened in the bank in Ukraine, but it's pretty crazy stuff. So once again, just to wrap it all up, I just want to explain Zelensky, actor, producer, created a production studio, made a show, literally does, like created the team for the production studio. Uh, created a show where he himself starred as the average everyday person who becomes the president of Ukraine, aired it on this guy who's now banned in the U.S. as a television station or, or, or network, according to that report. Um, and then, you know, after three years of conditioning people to think he's this amazing guy just like them, then he runs for office and then he wins with the help of coverage from that guy. And then he basically turns his studio and his people in a studio into a it's almost like the production studio doubles as like a government, you know, group, because so many of those people that were just producers are now in the government. I mean, it would be like, I, I don't even know how to like uh, equate it to something in America because it's not the same. I guess it would it would be very, very similar if, I don't know, Judd Apatow, you know, who's a comedian producer or whatever, ran, ran for office. And then like his entire, you know, a lot of his staff ended up being people in his films and other producers. I mean, it's pretty wild. I guess like one or two would be normal. I don't know how many there are, but it's a fascinating, fascinating story. And I think what's crazier about it is this fact that over the course of the last couple of years with all this COVID hysteria, with the Trump uh, reporting, uh, it's not even like they were accurately pointing out what Trump was doing wrong. All they were doing was lying in the media. Every day was a lie. Anonymous U.S. official, like every story. And I'm getting annoyed because I want them to report the bad stuff about Trump. But it's almost like they never do. It's almost like they pick this fringe weirdo narrative for three years, Russia collusion, run off a cliff with it, confuse everybody. And then we're left like nobody trusts them anymore. Right. And now Joe Biden is like this senile degenerate who's, you know, canceling gas or whatever. And it's like at the end of the day, you know, people don't know what to think in this country because they've been lied to so much. So now that all this media that lied to me for two years over the COVID stuff, now they're getting behind this actor producer who apparently can't get his story straight on almost anything. Everything out of his mouth is like a big play. He's like a big actor. You know, you listen to Putin speak. I'm not saying he's honest. I'm not saying he's not corrupt. I think he's authoritarian. I know that he has done some wild things in his past, but he actually explains like, this is what I'm doing. This is how, why I'm doing it. And this is what I'm thinking. He totally goes through the whole thing. So you could be like, hey, it's kind of like Trump. Most of the time, Trump is just a straight shooter. I don't have to agree with him, but I know where he stands, right? He's not confusing me all the time with all these platitudes and all this fake nonsense. It's like, he's just telling it like he thinks it. And then you could decide as a man or a woman, like, I agree with that or I disagree with it. Zelensky is like a, it's all just a bunch of platitudes all the time. Women, children. I understand you want to appeal with emotion, but I, I don't know that I've ever heard a speech from him that's anything but like a giant stage. It's a big play to him. He's not explaining the past of their, their countries. He's not explaining the present. It's all just like, you know, give me a no fly zone or else I'm going to cry and lie about you. And he's throwing shade at NATO. He's throwing shade at America. This guy is a total puppet and he's trying to get us into World War III. And America's not taking the bait. NATO's not taking the bait. He's gotten so bad and the Ukrainian government's gotten so bad with their misinformation that even the State Department was telling people not to share a tweet from the U.S. Embassy in Kiev who was parroting what the Ukrainian government was saying. So that's how bad that they're getting, that even the State Department's coming in and being like, yeah, don't share that information. That's dangerous information to share because it's not true and it's going to get us into trouble. I mean, and he's, I, I see videos of him today and he's like, oh, you know, like we need a no fly zone. It's like, dude, a no fly zone would escalate this war to extremes that even NATO and America doesn't want to do. And he just wants to push us, push us, push us into it. Thank God that our country, even though we're wickedly corrupt, are standing up to him and being like, no, but this is what you're dealing with in the media. Once again, I'm going to play this for a second. Perhaps the most famous quote, I need ammo, not a ride that's getting everybody on his side. I mean, it's not, it's not even confirmed. Once again, I'm just going to show for people who just got here. Where did that quote even come from? Even Washington Post is saying his famous quote, not easily confirmed because apparently his own office doesn't acknowledge it. Our government doesn't acknowledge it. Only an unnamed U.S. official. I mean, what does that even mean? That could be like a random lady who has like, you know, a low level job at some government agency that just sits there and hates Donald Trump and likes Zelensky or something. It could be anybody. So, 
I mean, it's a fascinating, fascinating story. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you uh, appreciate or, or found this information interesting. And uh, I mean, I haven't seen anybody reporting that. Before I leave real quick, check out this illustration. I found this funny. If you're listening on a podcast, it's like a little, you know, virus handing a baton to, you know, someone with the Ukraine flag. And then there's this really powerful image of a, uh, you know, pawns bleeding and all these like lower level pieces bleeding on a chessboard. And, uh, you know, the king and queen are just dining. I think that's what they're doing to us here through the COVID narrative and through the Ukraine narrative. The people of Ukraine will suffer. The people of America will suffer. The people of Russia will suffer. The people of Europe will suffer. And these elites, whether it be Putin, Zelensky, you know, Biden, Blinken, et cetera, uh, uh, I don't know, whoever is, is involved with this, you know, I don't think they really care that much about people. Unfortunately, it's going to be average people who suffer. So I'm just hoping that people wake up a little bit because this narrative, I see a lot of people emotional, a lot of people like, well, I don't care if it's a lie. I, it feels good. And it's like, do, do you know how many wars have been started on lies? Do you know how many invasions, millions of people dead, trillions of dollars wasted? Do you know how much a trillion dollars is? A trillion is a thousand billion. A billion is a thousand million. I mean, that's a lot of money. And they're just wasting this money, starting wars, hurting our country off of narratives very similar to this, right? Very similar to, well, I mean, that could be a war crime. I mean, he just slaughtered all these people on an island. It's like, that didn't happen. You know what I'm saying? That never happened. So that starts to get me to question, so what is happening? You know, my media, I've watched them air a clip and say it was from Syria and I believe it was from a gun range in Kentucky or a gun range in America. I mean, this guy is literally in Ukraine, an actor, producer, whose forte is a production studio. So if he lied about the three stories that I've heard him tell and the three stories that the media is telling, how do I know when I'm not in Ukraine or Russia? I don't know who Putin is. I don't know who, who Zelensky is or who's telling the truth. I'm not saying I don't know who they are, but you get what I'm saying. I'm not there. So I can't really witness it with my own eyes. My own television uh, you know, uh, I would say American media, they tried to tell me as my city was burning in Los Angeles that, oh, it's just a mostly peaceful protest. Oh, this is great. Oh, we're going to bail them out of jail. I mean, they burned my coffee shop. They burned a bunch of businesses. They killed people, you know, in different cities in the country. And our media is like, oh, that's OK. You know, the same thing they did with the Ukraine revolution a couple years ago when 100 people died. They call it the revolution of dignity. Look it up. Google the revolution of dignity. It was a real insurrection. You think January 6th was 9-11? That's what they say in the media. But then they support the revolution of dignity, quote unquote, where over 100 something people and died, in, in, including 10 plus police officers or so. And that's this beautiful insurrection to the, to the Western media. Something's not adding up. And I think I know what that something is. You know, we have the entire country slobbering over this total puppet, right? This total puppet that is clearly trying to get us into a no-fly zone type war, clearly lied about most of his major talking points. And the people that say, I don't care if the, the ghost of Kiev is a lie. I don't care if Snake Island was a lie. I don't care if the quote was a lie. I guess you're the type of person that would, you know, just be like, ah, I, we got to go fight Saddam Hussein. So let's go, you know, start a 20... 20 year multi trillion dollar war where kids in our own country are dying and our country's less safe for it. Do we feel more safe now than we were before 9 11 or even in 2009 or 10? You know, did the, did the war in the Middle East make our country so great and safe and prosperous? I mean, maybe, but I don't really think so. So, you know, stay focused, people. Definitely let me know what you think. And uh, I'll tell you what I think as I wrap it up. I think that. People should check this guy out and be very, very cautious of supporting the dual party slobbering Sean Hannity, Marco Rubio, Lindsey Graham, CNN. You know, once again, all the boys are back at it. Just like in Ukraine, I think America is filled with puppets. And the more you look into it, who they're being puppeted by, the less you could speak about it. It's the same reason they're passing speech laws in America. So during the COVID regime, they started passing speech laws on Facebook. Book and you know there were no sort of medical misinformation you can't disagree with the world health organization that type of stuff did not exist once they rolled out the vaccines once they rolled out the lockdowns they started essentially making it illegal 
to criticize. And I'm sorry, but if you live in a free country, the First Amendment should apply and you're supposed to have a Supreme Court that makes sure that you don't have any loopholes. Like, yeah, there could be places where you have little rules, but you're not supposed to subvert the entire Constitution and our entire justice system. But that's what they did. These big corporations, they control all this real estate. They take over, you know, entire things like uh, the public space where people can speak. They lock you in your house, right? This is the really nefarious part that I think a lot of people miss. They lock you in your house. They essentially say, you're not allowed to leave and see people in the street. Well, I want to go talk to somebody. I, I don't need to use Facebook. I could go talk. To well, no, you can't go to events anymore. So pretty much the only place to speak was on the internet. They took away everything else and then made it illegal to protest. So, and then they started making it illegal, illegal to question the vaccine. If you told the truth about the vaccine, that it wasn't going to stop transmission, it wasn't going to stop the spread, it wasn't going to slow the spread because people who were getting it were still going to get sick and still spread it to others, you would have been deleted. If you talked about the lab leaks th theory, you would have been deleted. I had a video that was 100% factual. I could, if this were in a court of law and they said why they banned it, I would win because I could prove that nothing I said there was fabricated at all. Well, they still banned it. So you got banned for two years under this idea that you can't question health, misinformation. Really what it is, is the regime. They figured out a way they've hidden their agenda behind the COVID stuff and said, well, now we're going to uproot your society, lock you in your house, essentially relegate you to slaves, prisoners and serfs. And you're not even allowed to question it. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of people when this all came around, they were like, well, you know, we're, we're just going to go back to normal and I'm just going to follow along because we're and I was thinking to myself and once again, I'm not trying to spread fear because there's nothing scary about it. You know, life is good. It's still amazing in America. I'm still grateful. I think everything's going to be fine. But, you know, freedom is not given. It's earned. And when freedom is taken away, it usually doesn't come back. So after like six months of really figuring this stuff out, unfortunately, it really annoyed me how many conservatives and freedom fighters were kind of like, yeah, but, you know, oh, it'll go back to normal soon. And it's like, you know, the second that the COVID agenda ends, there's the Russia-Ukraine agenda. What do you know, folks? Now it's doing, a, oh, well, you know, we're going to ban Russian gas. Cool. But what does that do? It bans Russian gas. So what's going to happen? We're going to go get it from somewhere else. Iran, Venezuela. I don't know. We're not producing it. Now they're talking about clean energy, clean energy, quote unquote. Isn't that interesting? They've always wanted to phase out gas. They've always wanted to go to electric and solar. They're, they've been phasing out nuclear, even though it makes no sense. And now, hand in hand, our, one of our biggest, if not our biggest, you know, import of, of gas is now gone. And when this Russia-Ukraine conflict is over, is this going to, you know, are we going to go back to it? Maybe, maybe Russia doesn't want to sell it to us. Maybe we don't want to buy it. So conveniently, once again, there's a conflict in the world that pushes forward their agenda that they've already wanted to do anyway. Isn't that just interesting? You had one of the guys from Bayer come out recently. It's being fact-checked all over, but you can find the, uh, the quote yourself. Basically being like, wow, you know, this mRNA technology, people would have been more hesitant to do it if there wasn't this big COVID scare. And now it's like normalized the society. He's like, isn't that convenient? It's like, yeah, that that is pretty convenient. That's amazing. I mean, that must have just been totally random right it's like we have this technology we're not sure how to sell it to people oh we'll just force it on people and we'll have this the biggest fear campaign in modern history so people are more comfortable with it is that random i mean for pfizer and moderna that's the greatest random thing that's ever happened to them ever you know but i guess for the average person depends where you stand um but you know i see that happening with the gas situation now they're they're now cutting off one of our biggest imports of oil when they've always wanted to phase out oil anyway. Uh, so long story short, I think the people, unfortunately, you know, I'm not saying there's much you could really do, I guess, just be yourself, be true to yourself and, you know, don't bow down to tyranny and, and, and stand firm peacefully, legally, but, you know, don't be another pawn. But the people that on the right that are like, oh, this is all going to go back to normal. It's like, why? No, it's not like, why? You know, it's been two years and it, there wasn't a day where we had one sense of nor normality. The second that the COVID stuff was ending in the media, the Russia-Ukraine narrative has come up. And now we, you have Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio, all these people that pretended to be on your side. Now they're showing exactly who they are. They're the same Iraq war warmongers. They're the same dual party frauds. And when you look into who was puppeting Zelensky, there's a similar type of situation going on in America. That's why Trump and even DeSantis, even though I like him, 
uh, and Ted Cruz and Nancy Pelosi, you know, they don't agree on very much, but they do all agree on one thing, speech laws for a foreign country, the same foreign country that, that Zelensky was flying to. You know, isn't that interesting? It's like, oh, yeah, you know, we're right wing. We don't believe in hate speech laws, but we will pass them for a foreign country and a group of people for a race, religion. We don't know. It's so broad. We'll just pass it and we'll, we'll tell everybody they're horrible if they disagree with it. No, it's another way. If you look at that billionaire, what was he creating in Europe? He was creating a union or, and, and, a, and a group for a specific group of people. And that's what he hides behind because that's the easiest way to hide behind. It's not to blame all people. You know, do I hate all gay people or all of a certain ethnicity? Of course not. Why would I? I, I don't even hate people in Russia. I feel bad for people in Russia. I feel bad for people in Israel that have to take like three Pfizer shots or else they can't go to a restaurant. I feel bad for good people all over the world, but the people that are wicked understand if I just do wicked things and lie, you know, no, people are going to stop me. So how do you hide it? You hide it behind, well, I'm Jewish. I'm creating a Jewish organization. Well, I'm black. It's Black Lives Matter. Well, I'm LGBT and you're a, you know, transphobe. If you disagree with me, you know, teaching your kids sexuality at the age of three, this is how they do it. So they're going to keep doing it. But what I'm trying to tell people is it's not just the Democrats and Nancy Pelosi. Ted Cruz is a puppet. Donald Trump is a puppet. Even Ron DeSantis, although he's the least of, of all the puppets, he's the king of the puppets. He's still a puppet because he's passing speech laws for a group of people in a foreign country that will be weaponized and used against you. There's no such thing in the First Amendment that says, well, if you're Jewish, then this. If you're black, then this. If you're gay, then this. That's not what it is. It's going to be weaponized against you. The freedom of speech, a black man should be able to speak to a white man. You should be able to say what you want. You don't offend me. Talk about my race. Talk about Italian, Puerto Rican, Czechoslovakia, Polish. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? You could say something that's true. It won't bother me. You could say something that's fake. It won't. But I don't care. I don't need a speech law to protect my feelings. Like I could defend myself. I could defend my heritage with my voice and with my actions. I don't need a freaking law that the, yet you get thrown in jail for questioning my history. You know, this is what they're doing in the world. OK, so. It's not just the left. It's not look at this situation. You got Trump on Twitter being like, I, I'll read his little goofy tweet here. Let me re, let me let me try to find the Trump tweet. Of course, my uh, keyboard is not working now, so it's going to be hard. But I'm going to try to find this Trump tweet real quick. Oh, my goodness. Why is my keyboard not working? It died on me. I guess I can't find the full one. But Trump's tweeting. Eh. Uh, uh, this is not a full quote. It's like, I, I gave Zelensky weapons, okay? I gave Ukraine the weapons, okay? Now they're saying Biden gave him weapons and I gave him weapons, okay? Trump is like the, the Pied Piper puppet making you into these stupid narratives. And I'm like, who cares? He's like, uh, I did the vaccines, okay? I did the vaccines, not Biden, okay? Well, then you're a loser. Operation Warp Speed sucks and you're a fraud. You got kicked off of Twitter and social media in 2020, 2021. You could have been the realest. You should have went around telling the truth. Oh, you want to ban me? I'm going to be like Alex Jones. I'm going to show up at an event and start talking to people and saying what I want wherever I want. You know, instead, Donald Trump turned into the biggest puppet. He folded like a little crybaby dog with his tail between his legs and ran around Newsmax and Fox News selling vaccines to boomers. I mean, hes I, I can't even put into words what a clown move that was. You know, you get banned, you should get 10 times raw. You want to ban me? I know I'll, I'm going to start talking real big boy stuff. You know, instead, Trump's like, eh, I did the vaccines. Eh, Moderna's a good company. Eh, they never should have took the J&J &J off the market. Eh, I love J&J. &J. Cool. And, and people still, oh, I, I sold the weapons to Ukraine. Like, you get what I'm saying? That's the game they're playing. Oh, Trump sold the weapons to Ukraine. Who cares? That's not a great thing. Why are you, you know, why are you why are you funneling weapons to a puppet country with a fraud president that hates this country or doesn't care about us, you know, next to a country that we promised that we wouldn't do that in order to, you know, escalate a war? That's not cool. But it's like, well, I did it. I did the vaccines. I did the weapons. And people fall for this stuff. And they're all being puppeted by the same people. They're passing speech laws, they're getting us into wars. They're funnel, fueling vaccines when, when they need be. It's not a free market situation. They shut the country down, funneled $18 billion to Big Pharma. And until people realize this, you know, the, the, the circus clown show is going to keep on going. You're going to have liberals who were wearing masks three weeks ago. Now they're wearing a Ukraine flag. Program, program, new program in. Take the mask off. Put the Ukraine flag on your profile picture. And they're like, 
beep, boop, beep, boop, boop. I am an activist. I care so much about a country that I didn't even know existed two weeks ago. It's like, you make no sense. It's like in America, everything's like, oh, white supremacy, white this, white that, you know, oh my God, white people are so bad. So I'm going to support a country uh, halfway around the world that's white and try to give them AKs when, you know, there's reports coming that there's some sort of like Azov battalion that literally have like far right people there. Oh, we like them though. It's like, there's no consistency, what, consistency whatsoever to their beliefs. And then you got right wing people running circles around Donald Trump when he's the biggest fraud of them all. He keeps proving it. He has nothing to say anymore. Ted Cruz is like, I just had a phone call with Zelensky. He's, it's like, they're such clowns. And the clown circus is going to keep running until people realize what's going on and call them out. Why are you passing speech laws? Why did you fold like a lawn chair in 2020? Why did you run around the country selling vaccines in 2021? Why, Ted Cruz, do you pretend to be such a freedom fighter? And then you say, let's just take masks off of people who got vaccines a year after a pandemic. And the second that it's over, you run headfirst into the next, uh, you know, psyop narrative. So, you know, it's just a big circus. I'm not trying to be pessimistic about it because I live my life. Life is good. I'm grateful to be here and be able to share my perspective with you. I'm very, very blessed, very fortunate. So my life is good. But the, the fact that people on the left are falling headfirst into this is crazy. The fact that so many right wingers are like, oh, I don't care. You, I, I mean, anomaly. It's like, what news are you watching? Are you watching Fox News programming? It's just like bombs and, you know, footage of firefighters all day. So it just freaks you out and you just run headfirst into like Sean Hannity's narrative. You got, you know, controlled op Mark Levin now being like, I see nothing wrong with what Hannity said, trying to, assess, you know, saying to assassinate Putin. It's like, that's because you're a clown, Mark Levin. All you do is pretend to be just like everybody else until push comes to shove. And then you turn into a neocon war hawk, you know, Iraq war psychopath again, trying to get our country screwed over. Focus on our country. You know, the south side of Chicago is like a war zone. I mean, half of the cities aren't even, I wouldn't go to New York City if you paid me. I wouldn't go to LA if you paid me. Forget about Ukraine or Russia. I don't even want to go to the two best cities in the world, in our country, because they're not good cities anymore. You know why? Because when you guys get into power, you do absolutely nothing. You cave to Big Pharma. You cave to Zelensky. You cave to the mainstream media. You become Washington Post when your country needs you the most. Trump's running around selling vaccines when he should be speaking the truth in 2021, when he has you know, the platform to do whatever he wants because he got deep platform, so he doesn't have any constrictions. Uh, you know, print $6 trillion when you're in power. Oh, we're so freedom here. We're going to do AOC's agenda and then lie about it. It's like, you know, th they're a bunch of clowns. It's a big circus show. And when you figure it out, that's when they stop doing it. It's the same as the CDC. They said, well, we can't get people to quarantine. And that's part of the social sciences, they explained. It's not just physical science. There's social sciences and psychological sciences. Uh, Rochelle Walansky explained to the news, you know, the reason we're, we're, we're changing the quarantine time is because people won't listen. You know, they look at people like pawns. It's like, if they listen, we'll just keep doing it. If they don't, if they, if they smarten up and they stop listening to our psychotic Orwellian slave rules, then we'll start to shift them to slightly less slavery because they'll listen to that. It's like, you get what I'm saying? They're, they're openly telling you this is the same with Trump, the same with Cruz, the same with Biden. They're doing what they could get away with and they could get away with pretty much anything because the Democrats hate the Republicans. The Republicans hate the Democrats. The Republicans are better than the Democrats. They're still the, the lesser two evil as far as like who you should probably vote for now. But they're not really doing they're doing just enough to get your vote. And then when push comes to shove, they fold like a lawn chair and send you to hell just like the Democrats. And it's going to continue until people realize that. And it's not just politics they use. It's, of course, race, you know, this fake race war that they're trying to create in America from black and white. And, you know, what they're doing is they're trying to weaponize and make people hate each other. But then simultaneously, as they're doing that, they're trying to push this diversity and push everyone together. So it's like, you know shaking up a bee's hornet's nest and then being like, okay, go play. You know, where it's like everything would be fine. People would naturally work their, their self out. Certain Koreans want to live in Koreatown. They don't want to live in the white area. And people who wanted to, you know, mix and mingle would mix and mingle. You know, that's what happens in real life anyway. They've pushed so much diversity and so much integration and people still naturally segregate. You go to a lot of communities, they're mostly black, mostly Asian in a free market. It's the same as like certain women. It's like, well, they're not getting these type of jobs. It's because in a free market, men and women just technically have different want, wants and beliefs. It's like, well, I don't want to do that. You know, you could force it, but sometimes naturally people choose to go to different places. The point I'm getting, though, is all of this racial manipulation and division, it's so forced. They're making 
a lot of black people hate white people. They're making a lot of white people hate black people. They're making, you know, intersect nationality just weaponizing it against like the conservative man you know that's like the big scoop oh if we just get rid of the conservative man and the christians then this country will be great this country will literally be hell you know that the only thing hanging on to a thread is people who love this country farmers truckers the people that hate liberals now the ones who actually work and carry stuff you know you would probably even see a a, a, a poll of like if you go to workers in any ethnic group it's like people that actually do physical labor and stuff that's like hard you know, they're, they tend to lean more conservative most of the time because it's like they're not living in this fantasy Huffington Post like blog world or going off to college getting brainwashed. So, you know, all this stuff that they're doing to our country, they use politics to divide us. They use race to divide us. They use, in some cases, religion to divide us or weaponize two religions against each other that shouldn't be fighting. So people mysteriously can't figure out who's doing it. Uh, you know, it, it's tiresome. But uh, at the end of the day, I guess I'll end on this note. You know, God is great. I, I'm very grateful. I'm very blessed to be here. I'm very happy. But it almost seems like after four years, after two years of COVID, the amount of people who, you know, have figured it out, it's getting bigger and bigger, which is always great. But, you know, the amount of people that have learned nothing on the Republican side, like I, I, I personally think it's the right wing and the honest left wing, which is getting smaller and smaller. It's really coming, you know, the 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 push to save America is coming through the right. It just seems that way, less brainwashed, more understanding of like World Economic Forum stuff, et cetera. But at the same time, people are so running circles around Trump and like, you know, this goofy like CPAC narrative, go to the Charlie Kirk event and just do like status quo stuff. But these people push comes to shove. It's like they're always, you know, flopping like a fish. So I, I hope people pay attention. I hope you like this live stream and I'm going to keep it somewhat short and just end it like that. So thank you guys for listening. I'm going to probably put this on my podcast and uh, share this if you like. Check it out. And uh, if you don't like it, that's all good. Leave a comment and let me know what you disagree with. But, you know, the circus will continue. The show will continue as long as actors and producers are the main star of the show. And as long as it's like I'm not trying to be mean, but it's like Ted Cruz, like Ted Cruz is like a goofy, ugly actor compared to Zelensky. He probably loves Zelensky because he's like, dang, this guy literally knows how to act. I suck at it. It's like, you know, as soon as I think I start like Ted Cruz and all these other people, they just turn into the biggest flimsy puppets pushing the narrative. And, you know, I, I don't mean to be just bash the right, but it's like I'm almost getting more tired. I don't like Joe Biden. I don't trust any of the liberals anymore. Tulsi Gabbard's OK. Russell Brand's cool rest of them not, not, not doing nothing for me. Um, Bill Maher has his moments, but the rest of them doing nothing for me. So I look to my my side, right? You know, quote unquote, it's like, okay, well, we who do we have over here? A bunch of phonies, Trump selling vaccines, Ted Cruz, you know, uh, like slobbering over Zelensky, Rubio, it's like turning into, you know, Lindsey Graham overnight. You know, these people, at a certain point, I pray that Republicans stop clapping for these people go to CPAC and just clap for it's like why are you stop clapping for Ted Cruz okay no more clapping for Ted Cruz it's 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 like this guy gets away with it it's not just liberals like we could just sit here and blame liberals all the time it's conservatives it took a lot of conservative pages two weeks to figure out you know that they were pushing fake war propaganda you know I was calling people out early I don't like to call out my friends and stuff because honestly I like a lot of right-wing influencers but I'm watching them fall head deep into these Jesse Smollett war propaganda narratives and I'm like how are you falling for this did, did you learn nothing from the Iraq war you learned nothing from the Trump administration two years of COVID-19 and you just forgot about it overnight and joined the Washington Post and Fox News's war agenda you know I couldn't believe that it got so widespread people have corrected a lot of people learn but it's like, stop clapping for these bozos. You know, Donald Trump, Ted Cruz, Rubio, Lindsey Graham, they all deserve to be booed until they do. You know, the fact that they could just go and have an event and everyone cheers for them, it's like a big circus. They're like, dude, these people learn nothing. I sold them out in 2020. I became a communist. I printed $6 trillion. I locked down. I worked with Fauci. I gave them a stage. I worked with Moderna. I gave money to Big Pharma. I got to platform. I, I set my supporters up at the Capitol, you know, did nothing for them, ran around the country in 2021 selling vaccines every chance he got. It's like Trump was like a Big Pharma puppet in 2021. He'd get on television and he'd be like, oh, Moderna and Pfizer is the greatest thing in the world. I did 100 million. You know, I saved the Spanish flu, the world. And it's like, what? And then now he's like, I gave Zelensky more weapons. Than it's, it's a big clown show. Why are people still clapping? Why are people still dancing with them? 
you know, when he says YMCA, just start booing. YMCA, boo. Boo these people. Once you start booing them, like Alabama did, that's when they change. Everyone said, oh, Anomaly, you're too harsh. Who do you like? Oh, you know, who's going to save me? It's like once Alabama listened to me and other people and they booed Trump, that's when he stopped and backed off the big pharma, you know, puppet agenda. He was a total big pharma puppet for the entire year until he got booed and booed and booed. And, and then he stopped. These people are like professional actors. Zelensky's just literally a professional actor. But these other people, Cruz, he knows how to finesse it. How do I please them and how do I please them? How do I please my, you know, my corporate buddies who have more power than the MAGA crowd, but then stand in front of the MAGA crowd and say Bitcoin so they all cheer? They've, they've, they've perfected the, the finesse. Donald Trump is perhaps the slyest of them all. You know, he's perfected this. He's so popular. He's so loved. He's so, but he continuously just pushes people over. It's like, oh, I'll give you some gas, but then I'll sell you out to Big Pharma. I'll lock down for two weeks and then I'll fight it, but then I'll do it, but then I'll fight it. You know, I'll have, I'll have meetings with Facebook and they'll do platform me and I'll act confused. He's like a giant circus clown. It's like, uh, it's this big, like circular thing where everyone's like, uh, it's going to last forever, you know, as long as he's out there until people are like, wait, okay, you know, what's going on? Like, why, what's your plan? They don't really have a plan. Listen, Listen to Trump speak. I, I should play the clip later, but he's on some show and he says, Israel used to own our Congress. He said that on a show, literally. It was all in the media. They were calling him an anti-Semite. Trump, obviously not anti-Semitic. He loves Israel. He loves Jewish people. Uh, he passes speech laws for them. Trump is the least anti-Semitic person I've ever seen in my life. But they still called him that because he exposed something that they didn't want him to expose. He said, Israel used to own our Congress and they don't anymore. And I think they should again. That's who Donald Trump is. That's who he's working for. Israel and Big Pharma. There, I just told you, okay? No more mystery anymore, folks. That's, you know, he's, he has no amazing plan for America. He has a plan to do his little tap dance, do the YMCA, you know, give you a few bones. And then mysteriously, when push comes to shove in the fourth quarter in 2020, all of a sudden, Donald Trump just, oh, I'm working with Fauci. I'm fighting Fauci. I'm funding Big Pharma. I hate Big Pharma. I'm standing up to Big Pharma while giving them money and power and liability shields. Ah, capital, go, go. I don't know. Mike Pence is going to overturn the election or something. And everyone's like, oh, that sounds legit. And I'm like, dude, he's lying to you. I, I knew that sounded fake the entire time. No, we got to go to the Capitol. Yeah, to get set up by the feds. So now you can't protest the lockdowns anymore. So now there's no... You know, no chance that you can do anything about these Orwellian medical rules. Yeah, now every organizer who would have stood up against that fell for the Pied Piper. Donald Trump walked him right into the ocean. People didn't even realize it. So then what happened, right? 2021. Okay, he walked you into the ocean with the event that ended up being set up. Did he like apologize a lot or like really stand up for the people since he had no, you know, Twitter to lose? I mean, you know, why not go harder when you have no social media to lose? No, he ran around conservative media like a pull string doll for Pfizer, Moderna, and Johnson and Johnson. Pull string Trump. Oh, I saved the Spanish flu. Go get I got the booster shot. You should too. Freedom or whatever. Yeah, I don't support the mandates, but you should get it. He's a snake oil used car salesman sleazeball. Okay. And people can get mad, people can hate it, but I don't have 20, 30 years to run in circles around the Pied Piper because our country is not going to last that long. OK, I'm just going to say it. Um, oh, I'll just wait till the COVID thing. ends. It's not going to end. You could, you know, books like I don't know where it is right here. I have it somewhere right here. COVID-19, the Great Reset. I showed you all quotes in my last live stream with Zuby. They're explaining exactly what they're thinking about all this stuff. I don't there is no theory. There is no conspiracy theory. I have the book. I'm reading it. They're writing what they're saying. They're doing live streams on YouTube. I don't just make stuff up and hallucinate. They don't like America, the Constitution, our culture, our people, the religion that helped found the country. None of that. They want to get rid of all of it. So there is no, oh, we're going to go back. And then it's just like a, a blip in time where they mess. They didn't mess up. There is no mess up. Oh, we just made. They didn't make mistakes. They made all the mistakes during COVID in the direction of the agenda that they want to have. It's not a mistake for them. It's a huge success. So now the day that it ends, the day that people finally wake up to that one, here's a new narrative that Ted Cruz is going to sell you out on. Donald Trump's going to sell you out on. Marco Rubio is going to sell you out on. Mark Levin's going to sell you out on. Sean Hannity is going to sell you out on. I would say Tucker Carlson. They hate him so much because he's not taking the bait. You know, anybody that's not taking the bait, Candace Owens is doing a great job. DC Drano is doing a great job. You know, there's a lot of winners there, but 
you know, this is once again exposed to losers. And it's going to keep going this way because they're trying to restructure the whole world. And it's not that hard to understand why they would do it or how they would do it. You have to understand the history. You had Stalin, you had Hitler, you had Mao Zedong. You, had, you know, you had these people. They were real, or at least I think they were real. I wasn't alive then, but you learn about them. There's video footage, right? You go back 200 years ago, 300 years ago, I, further than that, you have like Napoleon, you know, Genghis Khan, you know, people like that. They really were real, I think. I don't know. I wasn't alive then, but, you know, this idea, like, why would they be doing this? Certain people want to control. Why did the Democrats want to, you know, go full dictator over COVID? But, you know, Republicans don't really want to. Why does Putin, you know, kick people off of television when he disagrees with them? Why do uh, billionaires go missing in, in, in China when they criticize the government? You know, certain people want to lead that way. Top down, you know, communist style authoritarianism. I don't know. In America, I'm, and the reason I'm saying this is not to be pessimistic. I want to let you guys know how grateful I am to be here. I'm allowed to say this. I probably wouldn't be allowed to say this in Russia and China. Yeah, they might, you know, try to screw with my money. They might even go further. I just don't care. But the point I'm getting to in America, this is a great country because we can still do this. The window is still there. I'm not hateful or fearful. I'm grateful. I love this country. And they're slowly turning America with the First Amendment, with the ability to be a billionaire disagree, disagreeing with the narrative, with the ability to be somebody who comes from nothing and makes a million dollars, whether, you know, this is still that country. It's sliding, but it still is. So with that window of opportunity, if we allow these people to turn us into Russia and China like they're doing with the COVID thing, we didn't fight the China. Trump didn't fight the Chinese virus. He turned America into China. He helped let America turn into China. Did he stop it? No. Was he a part of it? Yes. Did he do the most? No. Did he do the least? No. He's complicit. He didn't fight China. There, I don't know if Steve Bannon's telling people this or something. You got, you got all these people like, oh, no, well, he's taking on China. I mean, kind of, yeah. Him, Pompeo, they're, they're fighting China. They turned us into China. Yeah, they're, they're, they're combating the government of China. But now my country has more you know, Chinese communist tendencies than we did in 2019. And they didn't get here this year or last year. They got here in 2020 with Trump in office and a Republican Senate. Uh, so, okay. So now that that's happening, what do we do about it? We have to stop that window from closing. And I want to say this real quick, because I know what I'm going to say is going to get misconstrued. I don't care. The reason that I push the boundary is because no speech law is going to go in your favor, whether it's an anti-Semitism speech law, a racist speech law, a sexist speech law, a gay speech law. What does that mean? What's a, what's a hate crime? A crime is a crime. If you lynch somebody, you should go to prison forever. If you, you know, punch somebody, assault somebody, that's a crime. It doesn't matter if you're gay or Jewish or lesbian or, you know, black or Asian. A crime is a crime. What is a hate crime? You know, people don't even think about this, but a hate crime now means you could go to prison for five years for burning an LGBT flag, but you can burn an American flag. So what does that mean in America that you're allowed? It's easier to burn an American flag than it is a gay flag. It means our country is gay. It means the LGBT flag is our country. We're not America anymore. We're gay America. And I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not taking a shot at gay and lesbian people. I'm just saying we're like the flag means less than than a flag that was invented in the last hundred years. You know, it's not even like a real nation. It's like a gay rainbow flag. But I'm just saying you have an easier time burning the American flag that millions of soldiers have died for than a, than a gay flag. That's what a hate crime is. They're weaponizing their agenda and making not a crime a crime anymore. It's like you can do that. But if you do that, a crime is a crime. You know, violence against any ethnic group. To me, it's all bad. I don't care if you do it to a white person, Jewish, Asian. It's all bad. Why, you know, stop committing terrible, violent crimes. It's horrible. But it's the same with hate speech. What is hate speech, folks? What does it mean to be racist? I, I mean, what's not racist nowadays, according to people? You know, this, I got a little freaking, what is this? Like a, a paper towel? This is racist. It's too white. My my paper's white. That's racist. My wall's racist. You know, uh, I, I I told the truth. It was racist. Like everything is considered racist because the people running the the, the house the show are just psychos. It's like they can't take any sort of conversation about anything. You know, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words may never hurt me. These people are like, words hurt me, uh, but I'll go bomb, you know, kids in Yemen and ignore it if it's a Democrat who does it. It's like, yeah, that phrase doesn't hit as hard. But, you know, every speech law is a bad idea. 
I don't hate Jewish people or hate Israel. The reason I talk about this so much and why Trump is getting puppeted by them and everyone else, it's not because I hate them. It's like if you say someone's getting puppeted by China. Do I hate China and Chinese people? Of course not. Do I hate Russia or Ukraine? I don't hate anybody. I don't hate any country. Every country has a right to exist at this point. And if, if y'all have a problem with your neighbors, that's for you to decide. I don't I don't run around the world, tell people what to believe. You know, I'm not the border enforcer in, in Israel. I'm just not, you know. In America, I, I would like to think that I have some sort of a perspective, but I don't hate anybody. I don't think it's just like the more they pass these laws, the harder and harder it is to say anything, because what does it mean to be racist? I mean, you you talk to anybody and everybody has a different definition. It means everything. It means nothing. So it can mean literally any conversation. OK, what's an anti-Semitism law? What, what does anti-Semitic mean to you? To me, the, if I were to say that and figure out what I really thought. I would say if you wanted to like go kill everybody and genocide, like, yeah, you're an anti-Semite, you're screwed up. If you, if you hate, even not that far, in my opinion, if you hate everybody of an ethnic group, I would say that that's ra racist and anti-Semitic. I don't like to use those words, but like, if you just like walk up to some random black dude and you're like, oh, I don't even like him, even if he's a great person, I would say you're that you can belong in that category. Everything else though, is just a lie. If you notice patterns in media, they'll call you this. If you notice patterns in crime, they'll call you this. It doesn't mean you hate everybody. So, you know, I'm not one to use those words, but I think if I were to define them, I would say somebody who hates innocent people and wishes ill harm on people because of their ethnicity instead of the content of their character. That's wrong. And I've never done that. I don't feel that way at all. I'm blessed to have you know, met amazing people that are Christian, Muslim, Jewish, black, white, Asian, you know, Hispanic. I understand that God created everybody. I'm not, I'm not out here being like, oh, God created me and my ethnicity and they're all fake. No, every God created everybody, you know, and there's great people in every country, great people in every ethnic group. So I've never been a hater like that, but I have to stand up for my country's freedom of speech because if you lose the right to speak, and they say there's, I've read all the anti-Semitism laws. I've told people they're on the State Department. They're being pushed by the Holocaust Remembrance Tour Memorial. Like there's some sort of group that is defining what it means to be an anti-Semite. And everybody's using those terms. Ron DeSantis, Donald Trump, left-wing groups like the ADL. They don't agree on anything, but somehow they all agree on these words. What are the terms? Read them. They're absolutely insane. There's some, you can't talk about Jesus in certain ways. You can't. Talk about uh, you can't call the, the, the government of Israel Nazis. I mean, I don't think they're Nazis, but you could call Trump a Nazi. You could call uh, Putin a Nazi. You can literally call this water bottle a Nazi. You can call anything a Nazi, but you can't call a foreign government that was forcing, you know, vaccines on their own people that. And I know Jewish people that call them that, you know, because they're like, I don't agree with that. I'm going to call them that 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 word. I don't do that because I don't like to be inaccurate. However, I think people have the right to have an opinion. If you think Trump's a Nazi, you should be able to say, it. I mean, you're wrong. That's stupid. It makes no sense. If you think Biden's a Nazi, I mean, once again, it just doesn't make sense. There's other words you can use for Biden, liar, geriatric, senile, but Nazi. I mean, I don't think he's that at all. You know, it's like, I wouldn't, I don't like to be sloppy with my definitions. However, it's America. You know, you can say what you want about people. You shouldn't defame and libel them. But I do think that you have the right, if you have a point, to try to say something. And, and you look at all these speech laws that are being passed by Trump and DeSantis and all these Republicans that are on your side. You have to ask yourself, why would they be passing them? I know why they're passing them. I know who's, you know, look at who's the big donors in the Republican Party. Look at their speeches. Look what they want. Look where they run around. They're not doing it for free. Just like Trump's not running. You think he's selling Pfizer vaccines because he just likes Pfizer a lot? No, he's the president. He funded them. They paid him. And it's a mutual relationship. It looks good for his resume. I'm the vaccine guy. I saved the world. I mean, it looks good for his bank account. Pfizer gave him a million dollars for the 2016 inauguration. Uh, and now he's connected at the hip with them because he rolled out their platform and it looks bad on him if it doesn't. So, you know, the speech laws are trying to make it illegal to say that certain people are funding them when they're funding them. They're trying to cover it up under the rug and say, well, it would be like that billionaire from Ukraine being like, oh, man, it's anti-Semitism to talk about me. It's like you might have defrauded a bank, bro. That's what they're accusing you of. It's not it's not hate speech to say that you might have done that. It's I mean, you're banned from the United States, apparently. So. You know, this, these are the games that they're going to play. 
And I'm very strong in this. I don't care how unpopular it is. I don't care how many people get mad at me or misframe me or lie about me. Because once you take away the freedom of speech in America, when you take away that and that and that, we're already here. They've already, I mean, it's nearly impossible for me to tell you the truth about what I think about the pharmacy injection. Nearly impossible, okay, in this country, because it's almost illegal on every platform. I mean, I would have to be banished to the depth and say, I mean, I've told people what I think about it, but I'm just saying in general, it's like certain reports, it's like, I don't know if I've been right in, in a year in advance and I got punished for it. And then a year later it comes out, oh, well, maybe that was true. It's like, it was true a year ago too. You just didn't want to talk about it. So the point I'm getting to is in America, we're already suffering for free speech. Like they've already taken so much from us. We're not here. We're here. So anybody, whether it's Ted Cruz, Trump, DeSantis, Biden, your best friend, Getter, I don't care. You know, we need to go the other way. But this is who these conservatives are. The most popular conservative event is CPAC, right? CPAC, Conservative Political Action Committee. Okay, if you go back to last year, they held an event in Florida with forced masking in the in, on, on the premises. So we're so conservative a year after a pandemic. You know, they kicked out my friends Fleckas and D.C. Drano for not wearing a mask. Oh, yeah. What are you going to conserve? You're, everyone's clapping for these people wearing masks, like looking like idiots. OK, let's fast forward a year. He's talking about, oh, man, you know, he's he's slobbering over the transgender swimmer. And I'm not saying to be mean to the person. You know, I think you should be nice to everyone for the most part. But it's like this is who CPAC. They're total frauds. This is all they do. Oh, I'm so conservative. Let's throw an event at a hotel where you have to wear a mask. Oh, I'm so conservative. Let's slobber over transgender swimmers when, you know, it's like, what do they stand for? What, what, nothing, you know, it's just a big hobnob. I get money. We make money. We have dinners. You know, we're, we're the right wing power structure. We're the gatekeepers, but we don't actually believe in that much that we talk about or not enough to actually do anything about it. But, you know, we want to play it safe enough that we can keep our power and not push the limits. It's like, so where does that lead us? It leads us in the wrong direction. And that's all I'm saying. With free speech, I take a really hard line in America. First Amendment doesn't say except for black people, except for Jewish people, except for Asians, except for everybody but white people, except for, you know, Muslims. That's not what the First Amendment says. I'm sorry. You know, if I want to go to a a country with a speech law, I'll go move to Saudi Arabia. You know, they have laws for their God and their their situation. I respect that more than speech laws in America. At least there's a purpose. It's not like you can't talk about this and that. And I don't want to live under Sharia law because I'm not Muslim. But I'm saying this is supposed to be the freedom capital of the world. And you have Democrats pushing for total speech censorship. You know, social media have already gone through full censorship. And then you have Donald Trump, DeSantis, your heroes who are not going back the other way. They're doing speech censorship too. And the reason that they're pushing these laws is because that's who's really backing them. So they're pushing laws to say that you can't say that the people that are backing them are backing them. It's twisted. It's not to help people. Do you think a speech law is going to stop an Asian woman from getting you know, beaten up in San Francisco? Do you think a speech law is going to help a synagogue? Do you think that's what's going to do it? A law that says somebody can't talk about somebody? Of course not. It's all BS. This doesn't stop violence. It actually adds more violence. When you're not allowed to speak the truth about something and you're not allowed to be honest about how you feel, whether it's right or wrong, and let it go out into the free market of ideas, you start to build a lot of resentment and hate. And I want to come here and tell people, I know people that are too hateful. You know, I'm not because I'm not going to let Satan win in this topic. You know, I'm not going to let him make me hateful and make me angry because that's how Satan wins. I'm not an angry person. I'm not a hateful person. If I got emotional and took my hate out for Joe Biden on everybody, you know, that's, that's my problem. That's not his problem. I'm not, I don't have to like Joe Biden, but I don't need to weaponize my hate and then hate everybody for something that one man's doing. But a lot of people are starting to feel that way. And I don't agree with it, but it's like people want to be able to speak about certain things. It's like COVID, et cetera. They're not allowed to talk. You're locking them in in their house and they're not even allowed to disagree with it. I mean, I'm shocked. And I, I don't say this with any pleasure because I don't want anything bad to happen in America. I'm shocked that our country is filled with such amazing people of every ethnic group and uh, political party that nothing crazier happened. And I'm not saying I want something to happen, but you had the Gretchen Whitmer plot. Oh my God, Gretchen Whitmer's getting kidnapped. It ended up being an FBI plot with FBI agents there, you know, hatching the plan. So I don't think that should happen at all. But it's like when you treat 330 million people like shit, 
I'm surprised more people didn't lose their minds. And I don't think that people should. I've tried to be, keep people calm and peaceful, of course, and there's no justification for that at all. I'm just saying it's like I think we have a great nation of great people because they treat us like complete garbage and people still maintain their composure. But at a certain point, you know, we have to take self-accountability self and realize if you stop people from speaking the truth about certain ethnic groups or stop people from speaking their opinion about society, it's only going to build more hate and resentment. It actually increases violence. You know, they're talking about anti-Semitism on the rise again. It's like you're banning speech all over the place. That's not healthy for people's political expression with race. I could say this for myself. When I grew up in this country, uh, when I was in high school, when I was in college, I didn't think about race that much. I mean, I, I had great parents. I lived in a nice area, so I, I feel very grateful. Um, but it, I thought about it in the sense of like, I, I was an activist, I wanted to help, but I didn't, I didn't psychoanalyze race all the time because I just treated people like people because I was raised properly and the media was not psychotic. I'm so happy I grew up when I did. I feel so bad for these kids with the forced masking and all this BLM agenda because they don't even know what it's like to look at somebody that's black or Muslim and not even think about them being black or Muslim, you know, just treating them like a normal human. My best friend was Muslim. I didn't think about it that much. The mom was nice. She prayed a lot. That was, you know, interesting to me. I thought it was a little wild, but I, I was like, that's dope. She just prays a lot. You know, she cooks good. Um, I didn't think about it. And these kids growing up, they don't even know what it's like to grow up and, and, and like somebody for who they are and not just think about their ethnic group all the time, whether it be you're white, you're privileged, you're black. I feel sorry for me. You guys are turning into psychopaths. You treat everybody like you're bad, you're good, I'll bow down. I got it. It's like it's no way to live. So now with all of this BLM activism and stuff, are they helping race relations in America? Of course not. You know, I know people in my family that never care. They still don't care. But it's just like it's annoying, you know, to people that have never treated anybody bad because of their ethnicity in their whole life. You're just being annoying all the time. And it's making people want to turn the NFL off. They don't hate black people. It's just like they hate the bullshit, just like I do. I, I listen to the commercials and I'm like, this is this is garbage. But you're you're making and then weaker people will, you know, start to feel more hateful and be like pushing the other direction. They get punched, they get punched, they get punched. And then they're pushing back. So all of these speech laws, all of this race activism, all of this, uh, you know, social justice that they're pushing, it's purposely dividing our country. It's pushing us towards Marxism and communism, admittingly, if you really research who these people are and how they were founded. And it's making, you know, tension way, way, way worse than it was 10 years ago. And justifying like people burning down their neighborhoods when something bad happens is what happened last year. You know, I'm not convinced that the next time that, uh, you know, a police footage comes out, whether it be right or wrong, people, why wouldn't people do the same thing again? You know, it's like they were told, well, if this happens and you see this on Twitter, you know, go burn down your local Starbucks and it's fine. And I'm not saying it is fine. I'm just saying that's the message that they're hearing on the television, not word for word, but it's like everybody's on your side. The NFL's on your side. The NBA's on your side. Society's on your side. Nike's on your side. You know, it's like culturally appropriate to just be like, yeah, well, I'm angry at this situation. Let me go do that. And then it makes the other side angrier because they're watching their neighborhood burn down and they're watching their country go to crap. So just to wrap it up, I, I apologize for being long winded. But the reason I go so hard at the Republican Party for passing speech laws and the reason I go so hard uh, with the medical stuff, I'm not trying to hurt anybody. I want people to be healthy. But when they're shoving high fructose corn syrup down your throat and telling me that a 350 pound person is healthier than I am, even though I wake up early and work out and they're you know, slurping down high fructose corn syrup every day and just putting on a Pfizer badge, that's not good health. I mean, you know, I'm more concerned about canola oil in your house than I am about Russia coming to America. I mean, the fact that you look at pictures from 40s and 50s, obesity was not rampant in this country. And obesity is one of the biggest killers. Why are people so fat? It's not just exercise. It's the food that they're giving us. It's the oils, the, the seed oils that they're cooking in. It's the bread that they're giving us, which is like alien bread. It's not like normal sourdough bread or something that's semi-natural. I mean, we are being absolutely poisoned on every level of food and health. And then they have the nerve to say, let's close down gyms. And if you disagree, you're a bad person. So, you know, I go so hard at medical stuff, speech stuff, because our window of opportunity in America, it's a great country. I hope it stays great. I believe it will. But it's only going to stay great when enough people 
reject the narrative. You know, when enough people go to a podcast instead of going to CNN or Fox News, when enough people put their foot down and say, you know what? Yeah, Ted Cruz and Trump, you're better than Biden. You know, I'll vote for you over Biden, but it doesn't end there. I'm going to try to hold you accountable peacefully, legally, obviously, but you know, hold you accountable because I, I, I've identified that although you're better than Biden, you're going to lower my prices, you're not to be trusted. And I feel like you're going to sell us out too. Once people get to that understanding and stop dividing by race, stop dividing by, you know, these social constructs that they built in, in this country, that's when the change is going to come in the same way that it did when the CDC admitted, well, enough people won't listen to our quarantine rules. So now we shifted them. The same thing's going to happen with the speech laws and the same thing's going to happen with our freedom in this country. But it's not going to happen randomly and it's not going to happen earlier. And the Republican Party actually doesn't have a plan. There is no PSYOP Donald Trump X-22 report plan. It's a lie. It's a lie to get people to sit there and watch their country burn instead of being a part of the change. The change happened in America because enough people didn't take the bait. If enough people took the bait, if the, if the compliance rate for boosters, et cetera, and forced masking was like 80% of the population, it's going to stay that way forever. It was down to like 20 something percent on the boosters and masking, I would, I would guess, was starting to decline to even lower to the point where it couldn't last that much longer. Their polls were doing bad. People realized the Republicans were better. That's why they stopped. You get what I'm saying? It, do, it doesn't end. Same with the war agenda. Same with the speech agenda. It doesn't stop by going to a Trump rally. It doesn't stop by saying DeSantis is going to save me. I would vote for him over anyone else, but not anyone else. But, you know, people got to figure this stuff out. That's my message. That's what I'm trying to relay. Not to hate people, not to hate Republicans and not to not vote for them but to identify that they're not coming to save you. And the only way that they're going to realize that, oh, people know what we're doing and we have to actually do something better is when people demand it. They blow like the wind. A politician, think about it. Hillary Clinton, I'm against gay marriage. I support gay marriage. Obama, you know, Biden. Look at his speech 20 years ago. He's not the same person. All they do is blow in the wind. Donald Trump is better for sure. But at the end of the day, Push comes to shove and he blows in the wind too. You know, 2020 was the fourth quarter. Who is this guy? What's he going to do? To me, I trust him the same amount that I trust Ted Cruz, which is like very little. I, I think about him as a more, you know, I would say a more charismatic Ted Cruz with a better personality and, and way funnier. Except Ted Cruz actually makes better points than Trump on Bitcoin, in my opinion, and also. On, uh, on like spending bills. You know, Ted Cruz actually has his moments where he's actually more conservative than Donald Trump. Like, I don't think he is who he thinks he is. And I'm not saying that to be mean. I'm just saying that this is, this is not going to change with his presidency. It's going to get crazy. Uh, but also, you know, I would say prices might be better, et cetera. But once people realize what's going on, stop the conservative party from flopping like a fish. That's the only, only time it's going to end. Until then, it's just a show. Thank you, guys. I appreciate your time. God bless you. God bless your family. God bless America. God bless the world. I'm going to put this up on my podcast app, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Dream Rare Podcast is um, available now, folks. It's streaming hopefully everywhere. And uh, I'm just going to put this on the bottom real quick. I have a little banner. Oh, that's the wrong one. I guess I'm not. All right. Well, Appreciate y'all. Oh, here it is. There it is. Dream Rare Podcast by Anomaly. That's how you spell it. A-N-0-M-A-L-Y is available now everywhere. This podcast will be on it as well. Conversation with Zuby. And I'm having a conversation tomorrow with the CEO of Gab, Andrew Torba. Should be fun. God bless you guys. Have a beautiful day.